It's Dr. Lori, thrift with me. I'm shopping with Amy at Callahan Thrift. So some more glass. How about some Murano? We love Murano and I love fish, Amy. You got any fish? Well, I have a, the goldfish. Oh, I like him. You see him? Yeah. Let's get him out here, we can see him better. Yeah, let's get him so we can get him in the full shot. I'm only seeing the top of him. Perfect, stop, don't move. That's correct. Right there is perfect, okay? You're not doing anything wrong. You're wonderful. It's not that easy. You're doing great. <laughs> this piece I like for a lot of reasons. First of all, I like to see a diagonal. You notice that that fish is on a diagonal. So where basically uh, sort of the face of the fish is, it goes diagonally up to the tail. I like that because that directs your eye. That shows movement in art. I don't care if it's painting. I don't care if it's a sculpture. I don't care what it is. But that glass shows movement. I like that because you imagine fish moving, right? Yes. The other thing I like is I like the different colors inside. I like all the different glass. And I like the yes. textural nature of the interior of this. So you've got the clear glass that has some texture, but the interior really has color and texture. I like that piece. And that piece reminds me of the glass pieces of Venice, of course, and many of the glass pieces all over the world because many people will replicate that all over. So nice. how much is that? He is a whopping $6. Wow. Well, he's terrific at $6. I think you probably could get about $25 or $30 for him online at a retail for at the retail value. But wonderful. That, now there's no label on him, right? No. He's, no. Okay. Okay. May not even be real Murano. No. no, I don't I don't think it's real Murano. I think it's in the Murano style. I think people just the style. They, yeah, they mimic it, you know. Word like style and manner, you know, or after all represent that idea of it's like this, but it isn't exactly this. But I have to say it's a good looking piece. And the color scheme is good too. The black, the orange, the the seafoam green. Those colors are colors that we typically see of the 1970s. Uh, those colors like the oranges, like the seafoam greens, you know, uh, those earth tone colors that we see in the 70s and 70s decorating is really, really hot right now. My millennial collectors will always say to me, Dr. Lori, you know, I'm newly married. I have a new apartment or a new home and I want it to look like the 70s. So <laughs> I think that that fish will swim right away at six bucks, but I think it's probably worth a little bit more like in the 20 to 30 range. That's a nice piece too. I like that. Wonderful. I always tell people, protect the tag. If there's a label on your piece, make sure that you try to protect the tag. If it's, you know, a Monet or a Napier little tag on a chain, like on a piece of jewelry chain, protect it because it tells you, of course, who made it, the maker. If it's a label that is an adhesive label on the bottom of a piece of Murano, try to protect the label okay. because the label will help when you're trying to resell the pieces too. Correct. Yeah, so that's a good yes. thing. Because a lot of people will ruin the label when they're trying to wash or clean the piece, you know. Yeah, yeah, I try to protect the labels. I try not to clean too much with right. maybe just dust. <laughs> right, right, yeah. You want to get rid of the dust, right, Amy? You know, we all want to get rid of the dust, but you want to be careful. And that's why I say be careful when you're submerging pieces in water, too. Don't do that if you can afford not to do it, you know. Okay. All right, nice. Really nice. I've got some new glass. Oh, yeah. Yeah, nice. I like the milk glass. I love a piece of milk glass that's a planter. I think the planters, I think it looks nice on a table like what you have here with, mm -hmm. of course, uh, pieces that are made by all. There are some planters in the back. You know, well, you could use those as candy dishes, too, and compote. But, you know, you put a little succulent plant in there. Yeah, because I kill all the plants. So I yes. kill all the plants. So I like succulents because they kind of grow by. I don't know how they do it, but they do it themselves. And I used to like those air ferns from the seventies. Yes. Do you remember those? Yes. Yeah, yeah. those were good because you kind of put them over there and you didn't have to live, deal with them and or water them or worry about anything. Right. And they don't attract any bugs for some reason. The bugs don't <laughs> like those plants. Right. Well, that's good too because I hate bugs. This one um, is caught my eye. It oh, is what's that? Uh, it is clay made in Portugal. Ah, well, let's um, talk a little bit about Portugal. You know, when I was in Porto, Portugal, I have to say that the clay and the ceramics, they have a lovely oversheen. So that one's made in Portugal. And let's see the top of that. I like the fact that you have, you know, the nice clear mark. 
And you can see, again, that this is a piece that basically is attention to detail. Look at the inside of that. The inside yeah. of those buds show you the stem and they show you the little buds that are going to come out, right? And that's really what a flower looks like. Like, you know, if you're doing those and you see those American made and sometimes the ones made in Asia, they don't do that attention to detail. But the Portuguese are very interested in their ceramics being lifelike. And that's why you have those. I think that's a really nice, very calming, very nice piece. It might be nice for Ma Mother's Day or maybe for a birthday for Grandma kind of thing. I'd easily put $15 on that piece. I like that piece a lot. What's nice. your price? $4. Yeah, I would put 14 Put Perfect. a one in front of put that. Put a one in front. <laughs> that one's nice. Another but, piece I have that I've had since my store opened, and it is beautiful. It is a Capo de Monte lamp. So you've had it since the store is open. I Which have, one? and it's so really? beautiful. All right. So, so beautiful. It's a Capo de Monte beautiful lamp. So now I can't imagine that you're, that you're pricing it too high. Is it just no. that maybe it's not displayed well? Maybe it's not in a prominent place, or you've done that to protect it from damage? Um, probably both. <laughs> okay. Okay. That makes sense. No, that makes sense. You got to think of those things, right? Yes. And it's, it's marked Capo de Monte on the base? Yes. Okay. Can we see the mark? Maybe. Maybe. Be heavy. careful. Be careful. We're not going to break it now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> how long well, is this? How long has it been there, Amy? It's been here over a year now. All right. Over, over a year is not that long. Oh, over a year is not that long. There you are. No, I just probably no. haven't found the right owner. Yeah. So can we see the plug? Because the plug can teach you a lot about time period as yes. well. Sure, you can rewire things. I think one of the things that's hurting that lamp is the shade. You, you don't think that's probably not original? No? I think that that shade is probably of the same time period. But I'll mm -hmm. tell you, I think the Rick Rack, you know, that decorative Rick Rack, your eye goes to the Rick Rack and it doesn't take into consideration the nice points. The points okay. on that shade are really nicely decorated. The fact that that shade doesn't come down and cover the socket. I like the socket to be covered. I don't want to see the socket. Okay. You know? And maybe, and so maybe the, the shade's a little bit too top heavy for it. And okay. the rick rack, you know, the rick rack all the way around tends to make your eye kind of go to it instead of looking at the lamp. Oh, yeah. Did you see you're what right. I'm saying? Yeah, you're yeah. really right. All of these visual clues are extremely important when you're trying to resell things, which is why I give selling tips about certain things. Now, what's gorgeous about this is just what you said, Amy. Capa de Monte Applied Sculptural Ornamental. It's beautiful. So the applied ornament is really quite nice. And you know what also I think is very beautifully done are those embossed areas of the leaves, sort of those swoosh patterns on yes. the body. Yeah, on the body of it. Not just the embossed, not just the applied pieces of the grapes, but also the background. The background is really quite lovely. So yes, then, yeah. yeah, I like that very much. Now, it probably, it looks like it dates probably to the 50s or 60s. The shade is definitely the 50s or 60s. <laughs> okay. And if you see these bases on yes. lamps, all these different bases will tell you an awful lot about, of course, the time period. I know a lot about lamps, you know, and lamps are very, very, um, desirable and they're very collectible. A lot of people will want to, of course, trade lamps. And lamps have consistently gone up, 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 you know, um, mm -hmm. with the thrifting community. Can you show me the plug? Can you show me the actual plug that would be yes. put into the socket? Right here. You see it? Yeah. So now, when you look at that plug, you say the 1960s, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. When I see that plug, and plugs can help you identify, I teach you this in another video. Plugs and certain other attributes of lamps can teach you how to identify time period. Now, of course, you know, and all of you know that you can rewire a, an old lamp with a new plug, and then that doesn't help you. But if you have the original plug, the original cord, I want you to think about a couple of things. Be careful before you plug it in, mm -hmm. okay? Because Definitely. the wires inside over time could deteriorate and that could start a fire, so be aware of that. And the other thing I want you to look for is if there's a pair, please. I know you only need one lamp. If there's a pair, buy the pair. So okay. 
I guess you didn't get an opportunity to buy the pair, right, Amy? No, I didn't. Right. So what do you have this beautiful lamp priced at? Right now, I've got it down to $20. Oh, Amy. <laughs> well, no one's letting you sell that for $20. So a couple, of, a couple of different, there are going to be people getting in touch with you for $20 for that. <laughs> You're going to have to raise that price. But the, the other thing about Capitamonte, you probably know, you know the name, you've heard the name. Made in Naples, of course, the great port city of Naples, Italy. Very well known for, you know, the Italians, dramatic, you know. Yes. Pale, wonderful artistry going back to the Renaissance to the 1400s and that piece is really a wonderful piece that would be exported all over many Capodimonte lamps and many lamps in general from Italy would come with the immigrants in the early 20th century they'd come on the big ships in the early 20th century through Ellis Island I know my own grandfather brought some furnishings when he would go come over um, on the boat as they wow. would say in the early 20th century so that's a beautiful piece I think the shade might be hurting it. I might have to shop for another shade for it. Maybe, maybe, maybe an, an offset, maybe a different color, or maybe, I think it's the Rick Rack that's the problem. I don't think it's a bad shade. Hey, yeah. it's a $25 shade. You're offering yes. 20 bucks for the lamp when the shade itself is 25 bucks. <laughs> right. Right? <laughs> so. Correct. But you know your market. You know your market. I'm just trying to make sure not only that your clients get a good deal, but that everybody else knows how to tell the value. I want people to recognize the quality. That's why I share my expertise here on the channel so people yes. can understand and recognize the quality so they can do well. So they can decorate with beautiful things that they can live with themselves or they can right. flip it as a reseller. What right. other things, what do you want to show me, Amy? I've been saying I will love jewelry and I want this and I want to look at that. What do you want to show me? <laughs> well, I showed you a few things. I do have another- You're a um, wonderful hostess. I've had wonderful hosts. Thank hosts you, I'm enjoying this. <laughs> it's fun. It's fun. I have um, another Capa de Monte. Oh, that's nice too. A vase. That's nice too. Peacock vase. Yes. Yeah. I believe I like he is that. marked. Yeah, he has the mark on it. There you go. So late 20th century Capa de Monte mark, right? With the yes. Naples crown, because of course Naples was a duchy, a kingdom all itself, uh, going <laughs> all the way back to the 14, 1500s. But what makes this great is that. And this is what's interesting about a lot of the high-end, high-quality ceramic makers. They let the object be what it needs to be. So you're going, what does that mean, Dr. Lori? What that means is it's a nice peacock, but it looks really great when you have the right flowers in it because right. it's allowing it to be what it should be, which is a vase. You want to highlight the flowers, you know? Yes, so yes. I think putting flowers in that might help that too. I like that piece a lot. And there's some <laughs> shoes. We yeah. were talking about shoes before. Yes. Those are nice. And then what's very the uncomfortable. What's the well, very comfortable? <laughs> what's the multicolored um piece next to the shoes? Um, this is a typical item that we would have in here, something vintage that collectors would want. This is a coin, a color keyed coin tube. Oh, cool. To collect oh, yeah, your coins. Cool. Yeah. So you can your, put your coins into different banks, you just throw a whole bunch in. Yeah, so you would put this yes. on there and drop your coins in and get them into a um, tube. Yeah, into that. Well, you know, a lot of the banks have gotten rid of the automatic machines. Yes. Because I don't know if you guys are like that, but I would go with a whole bag of all coins, you know, throw all the coins, and they'd do the machines. And now the banks are saying, we're not doing that anymore. You have to wrap them yourself. I don't have time to be wrapping coins. Right. <laughs> that's right. a great thing. That's a great thing. I like that. Yes. Yeah. And that's yes. good for the little kids. When you have to keep the, you have to babysit the little kids and they have to you know, be kept occupied. That's a good yeah. project for little kids. Something you know? fun. Yeah, something fun with the colors. That's nice. So those are cool. Those are cool. Yeah. We do have a ton of Avon bottles. Avon bottles. Yeah. Yes. Let me show yeah. you. Let me walk you well, back you know, over here. Perfume bottles and Avon bottles in general do have a very large um, following. You know, my video about perfume <laughs> bottles hit the roof. So many people wanted to know, how do you tell? What does it mean? What do the numbers mean? What shapes are more popular? So the bottles, and not only Avon, but sometimes when you see an arrangement like what you have here, there's Avon bottles, but there's also going to be bottles that are made from really, really high end. Like, did you know that some of the great French glass houses would make, um, it would make perfume bottles for some of the firms like Cody? So you're saying, I didn't know it's a Lalique bottle, but it was in a Cody, you know, perfume 
oh, wow. uh, inside of it. So you really want to look and you want to learn that. So I have a video for you about that. But and then there are the figural ones, of course, of people like Benjamin Franklin and and um, George Washington, a couple Liberty Bells. You know, yes. uh, the birds are very popular and also the buildings. There's one that's the Capitol building, which I've talked about here on the show before. So a lot of nice ones. I like those. I think they make a dresser look really cool. They're really nice. And they fill up a curio cabinet on a budget. You know. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. Very popular. Um, How about from China? What's that pattern? This one here is... The white and the gray, you know, gray is in. Gray's been very hot in a lot of kitchens right now, you know. Imperial China, that's nice. I like the the detail. I like sort of the mm -hmm. detail. And I like a plain center of the dish. Why? Because I like to eat. So I yeah. don't want to have the decoration that I'm worried about hurting the decoration. I like a plain center. Yeah. I like the gray. That's very classic, but it's not too fussy. No, no. You know? Not too fussy. It's classic. It looks good. It means I kind of care about my guests, but I'm not over the top like Marie Antoinette. <laughs> I like that. I like that. And and I think, said, is that a service for 12? Um, that one, yes. Do you see folks who are buying a service for 12 or looking for a service for 12? Or are they just mm. looking for platters? Well, uh, not really do. I don't do very well with China. Okay. Um, they look for certain pieces to match their grandmother's sets. Okay. They um, look for the teacups. They love the teacups because tea parties are kind of popular right now here. Yeah. You know what and, other people, what people do too? Oh, you go ahead, Amy. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh no. And and the plates. I mean, some plates. You know, they're like you said, they're plain in the in the center, so they'll decorate them or. Yeah. You know, do the something with them. But you know, the teacups are also popular. People put candles in them. Yes. So they'll, they'll do a craft project where they'll, they'll melt a candle in the teacup and then they'll have the opportunity to have candles around because a lot of folks love to have an extra candle around. They don't just want the, the plain sort of candle in the um, plain, what I always call sort of the canning jar, you know, the, the glass jar. So yeah. I like that idea too, but I think that's a very nice set and I think it's kind of classic. So you're not trying to match something, you know, you're not it trying is. to match a color or something. It's just classic. It works out really nice. So yes. would you break up the set? Well, I don't like to, but I do. <laughs> okay. Some, I do. People, some folks in your situation will say, I'm not breaking up the set. I'm sorry. I don't have a complete set, but what I have together, I'm not breaking that up. So I just wonder whether or not you would, because I would think it gets harder for you once you start breaking up the set. Right. You know, and a piece yeah. like a set like this, I, I wouldn't, especially if they just wanted two teacups. Yeah, yeah. Or just yeah. teacups. No, I wouldn't. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have broke up, you know, just like if I just had this set here, I would give them that or two plates. So is that a service for eight? I, is it eight? Yes. My, okay, yes, so it's it a service eight. for eight. And how much for all of it? The cups? Um, the saucers, I have 25 on it. You have 25 on it. Okay. I would say for all of it, it's probably worth closer to 75 online. Okay. For a okay, partial set, service for eight, and it looks like you've got um, bread plates, dinner plates, saucers, cups. Yes. So part, you, got, you got what I call the meat and bones of it. You know, like the meat and potatoes of that set is what you got, which is what okay. you need. Oh, you don't have the salt and pepper shakers. Oh, you don't have a tea set to go with it. Oh, you don't have a platter. But you've got, I got eight people I've got to sit around the table at name the holiday, right? But I've got a nice set for those eight. I think that's a nice set. I'd go 75. 25 is a deal. Okay. 25 is a deal. Perfect. Yeah, that's nice too. But China, I could see where China gets a little bit more difficult. And I would see in a place like Clyde, maybe, you know, folks are a little bit more casual. We're not yes. having all these parties, right? Yes. You know, yes. it's not like, oh, you know, um, Lyndon and Lady Bird Johnson are coming over and we got to, no. you know, make sure the table looks nice, right? Yes. Yes. Right. What about that lamp up at the top? I just saw a nice lamp up at the top. Yeah. How about that lamp? Isn't that beautiful? I think that's beautiful. Can you back up a little bit so we can see it? I know it's up high. I like that. See, and I like that lamp without a shade. Because okay. we're not, the shade isn't competing with it to try to resell it. Okay. You know, you show the lamp for what the lamp is. I like, of course, the flame glass. I yes. like the curvature of the body. I like the metal at the bottom. I might, might try to clean up the metal a little bit more at the bottom, but for what it is, 
I, I'm I'm going 85 bucks on that lamp. How much is that lamp? Well, I've got 15 on it. 15 <laughs> is great. You got to make it at least as much as the Capa de Monte. <laughs> that's a nice lamp. And that's a lamp that I would think that you could really market to more people. I think there are a lot of people who might like that lamp for a couple reasons. It feels like the 1970s. It kind of has a little bit of a lava feeling because of the curvature. Yes. You know? I like that. I like the fact that you've got some nice bright colors. It's a great pop of color. You know, it will okay. go with earth tones, browns and greens. It would even go with the blues, you know, blues like what I'm wearing because orange and blue are complementary colors. They stimulate the optic nerve, right? Oh, okay. oh I like that lamp. <laughs> Wonderful. 15, you wouldn't have that lamp if I were in Clyde, Texas. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Oh, and there are the birdhouses. I love birdhouses. Yes. Yeah, I love them. So, so many of you have been so sweet. People are saying, Dr. Laura, I know you like birdhouses. I know you like fish. I know you like jewelry. I'm going to show you what you like. So, <laughs> so much fun to go shopping. Oh, I love to shop. You know, it spurts, stirs the memories. Let's see a, another pan shot of the whole shop. Um. Okay. So let's go farther in. Let's go farther in and look some more. How about oh. at some clothing? Okay. Let's take a little look at clothing. So when we're looking at clothing, because I get a lot of this in my Priority Ask Dr. Lori service, a lot of my subscribers will find things like vintage t-shirts and want to know about them. What do you see that sells really well with respect to clothing? Is it mainly jackets or is it designer stuff or is it well, work stuff? The army stuff sells really well. Oh, okay. The army stuff. The sells military well. camo. Camo. Oh, I like that. Let's look at that one. That one, one right there. Yeah, let's talk about that. Okay. So, so that one is a vintage piece, right? And you yes. see the epaulettes at the top, right? And then if you look at that patch, people collect just the patches. You probably know that. Oh, so when wow. you see, yeah, That's when you see one of those patches, just the patch mm -hmm. alone could be ten to twenty dollars because people look for military patchwork. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of like um, the Boy Scout That's badges, but the military pieces people look for, and people look for the buttons. Yes, the buttons are beautiful. Yeah, a lot of people actually will only buy something for the buttons to resell the individual buttons. I hate to hear that because, well, you know, you, you end up like kind of taking everything off the actual piece. Right. But a lot of people do that. That's a nice jacket. How much is that? These are 10. Those are 10. I sell them for right. 10 to 15, yeah. Okay, I've got 25 in the buttons. I've got $10 for the patch, right? So wow. I'm already at 35 Okay? okay, and we didn't even talk about the actual jacket. So okay. that online is going somewhere between 50 and 75 bucks. Nice. Nice, nice. So, yeah. So, Amy, you have any toys? Everybody loves toys. Yes. Thrift stores yeah. got to have toys. That's right. That's right. I have oh, these. Oops. Nice. Okay, let's talk about those. <laughs> wow. Those are really nice. So any tags on them? Is the original tag still on them? I'm not for sure on that. He's not tagged. Let's go with let's go with Minnie then. Minnie, are you tagged? Minnie, Minnie might have tag. a tag. Very, very old one. Yeah. Um, let me see so if I can a lot of firms made well, well, there was one particular firm that made some of these. Knickerbacker made them, of course. You probably a lot of you probably know that. Of course, under the auspices of Walt Disney Productions. Can you read that? Mm, contents, that's the wrong side. So it tells you about the contents, about the polyfiber probably, right? And this one is... Walt uh, Disney Distribution Company. Who was the distribution company? Walt Disney. The Walt Disney Distribution Company. Okay, so this is when Walt Disney has figured out that, wait a minute, we're not only making them and we can actually license and then distribute, of course, the images like, uh, of course, Minnie and Mickey. So these are pretty vintage. These are pretty nice, and they're in very good condition. And one of the things that's really big, of course, with toys, I don't have to tell you, odor. They can't smell of anything. Yes. Yeah. So yes. I would say the fact that you also have Minnie and Mickey is wonderful together. So what are they individually priced? Um, yes, I have them at $10 a piece. Okay. And then look at the shoes and look at the outfit. You know, you're noticing that Mick, Minnie is not all that dressed. 
but right. Mickey still has his original. The yellow shoes are pretty important, and they help you to identify date. Also, the way the, the shape of the heads are and the different eyes. You'll notice that the eyes are a little bit different on Minnie than they are on Mickey, so you know that they're made by different companies, even though they're about the same vintage. Early 20th century, very nice. So I would say Minnie at about $50 and Mickey at about 100 Oh, goodness. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And Wonderful. if they don't smell because they're of significant size, they look yes. like they're in good condition. And again, the floppy ears are something that we see that falls out of favor by the later part of the 1900s. Okay. That's nice. How about the doll in the box to <laughs> the left of Mickey? Madam Alexander. Yeah, look at her. Look at her She's there. really pretty. What's in front of her? She has a pacifier in her mouth? She has a bottle and a pacifier. Apparently she drinks and wets. <laughs> in, the, in the original box, a lot of people are going to remember this. Yes. That's beautiful. With her pillow, she's really beautiful. I think she's beautiful. She so is. She's worth about $45 or $50. I'd add another $3 probably for the box. So let's call it $50, $55. How much for that, Madam Alexander, with the accessories, the clothing, and the pillow, and the box? I have her for 20. Oh, very, very good. That's beautiful. That's a wonderful bargain, too. Yes. That's great. Yeah. And to join the family, I have the Simpsons. <laughs> ah, everybody, you got all of them. Oh, nice. The whole family. Um, the these whole ones family. from Burger King, we collected them. Wonderful. That's cool. Yeah, those are nice. So, and of course, the fact that the show's still going on, so yeah. people still have an interest. You've got a whole new generation having an interest in them. Yeah, yes. I really like that set. And you've got Meet the Simpsons. You've got all of You even actually have Maggie with her teddy bear. Yes. <laughs> That's great. That's great. I like that. What, have you, what do you have that priced at? I have it for 50 Okay, so like that's interesting to me because what you've done is many of the older pieces, you know, are don't have pretty high prices, but 50, which is still a good price for that, but 50 you have on a piece that's relatively contemporary, really. Okay. So you said, yeah. you know what, I be, probably because more of your, more of your um, clientele are able to say, oh yeah, I want that. And the fact that it is a set, the fact that you have all of the characters, you're not, you don't just have, you know, um, the kids or, and, and Homer, you have, you know, the whole set together. That's really important. And that's why you can command a little bit more when you have the sets, which I always say, I say it all the time. Don't break up the sets. What I like about this, I don't really like the packaging, although you have to keep the packaging because as someone who cares about preservation, that packaging is going to hurt those objects over time. Right. I'm glad that you don't have it in a sunny window because they would basically deteriorate even faster and they'd fade. Okay. So, but the plastic is really tough, especially in the Texas heat. The plastic yes. is going to be tough. But yes. I really like the fact that you have the set. And I do think that, and I do think that, that set is really um, pretty fine. It's a pretty fine set um, okay. all together. And probably made, of course, licensed from um, the creator. Um, and uh, looking back, I remember being in a Fox TV studio Actually, there's probably a picture of me with all of the um, characters from The Simpsons uh, behind the scenes at one of the Fox TV <laughs> studios. And it's fun because they did so much promotion when the show first came out, of course, that they yes. had life-size figures and they did all kinds of um, uh, relationships with, you know, Burger King and some of the other, of course, uh, retailers all over. Oh, Amy, what fun we've had in <laughs> deep in the heart of Texas. What a nice time. What a beautiful shop you have. I wish you continued success. And some of those prices way too low. A great place to go shopping for bargains yes. and treasure hunting with you, Amy. It was fun to be thrifting with Dr. Lori, wasn't it? It was absolutely a blast. The best part of my week. I appreciate you.